sky. Stories to give. The ones who make it there and can make it back. Salutations and shit, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Travel and Shit, your favorite travel podcast where your host, D. Carrie, have an experiential conversation about the nuanced ways that travel intersects with regular life. So, y'all, it is hot. I don't know if it's hot where y'all think it's that, but it's hot, hot. And But you know what? I'm going to complain because I complain about the winter. I don't move weather. I don't enjoy it. I don't um, enjoy shoveling out my car. Um, Shout out to the men in my life because I have thankfully, by the grace of God, been able to avoid the majority of that labor. But um, I don't know what it is about me. I don't know if y'all agree. I will traipse my little ass through somebody's 102 degrees, but as soon as it hits like 90 where I'm at, I hate it. It's so hot. And it's it's just a different feeling. I don't know. Something about the feeling of heat in your own city, in your own house. It's not the same as like, you know, vacation heat. But alas, hopefully the world doesn't uh, crumble and burn while we're still here. So uh, save the rest of the announcements for the end of the show because I got a guest. I got a guest. I got a guest, I got a guest, and not just any guest, but a beautiful guest and a guest that I'm certain many of you have heard of. So my beautiful guest, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself to the peoples. So thank you guys so much uh, for having me. It's an honor to be here on the podcast. So D, shout out to you. Thank you so much. I am Keem, also known in these internet streets as the passport abuser. I am a female solo traveler of 58 countries. I've been to 65, but only 58 of them have been solo. I have been featured in Forbes, Business Insider, USA Today, Newsweek, Essence Magazine, The Washington Post, and I teach an online course called Travel Like a Boss, um, which is a nine-week course that teaches men and women how to ace their first solo trip and how to master solo travel. So you guys can find me on Instagram at The Passport Abuser. Hello. So 60-something plus countries. But only 58 of them was by myself on my own. I, 60 plus countries. To hell with by yourself with somebody. Girl, that is such a grand undertaking. Like, how long have you been traveling? Did you grow up traveling? Like, sit, that's a lot. Yeah, you know what? No, I didn't grow up traveling. I, I grew mm-hmm. up like very poor. Like we we got like two pair of shoes a year. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't grow up with money or anything like that. It's just that my friends started to want to travel. It started out as Miami, then went over to Jamaica, okay. you know, like the usual mm-hmm kind of way that we evolve into travel and we start small we go further and further until we expand our travel palette and um I just looked up and here we are 58 countries by myself solo so what do you feel what was your first country let me ask that first my first country um out of the country was Jamaica my first country by Mm -hmm. myself was uh France I went to Paris for my first solo trip Okay. So how did you get into traveling internationally? Because I don't necessarily have, I've never been anywhere international. Partial I went with my homegirl, Chris. Hey boo. We went to Alberta together, but I hadn't had like your traditional girls trip, friends trip. Um, The first time I left the country, like was by myself. So what was like your first experience traveling like because I feel like that first trip can kind of either pause you because I won't necessarily say like stop you right because while somebody may have like a mm, experience or an experience that doesn't necessarily fulfill what they may have expected you might pause and take a while to get back to it or shift the way you travel but like for your first time out Jamaica did you do a cruise did you do like uh, study abroad what was and how old were you 
Um, I was 27 at the time okay. and it was my girlfriend Simone's birthday and she said yo I'm trying to go to Jamaica for my birthday and I said well I've never even gone out the country before so I applied for my passport just so I can go and celebrate her birthday with her so and we had so much fun that I said damn I want to come back to Jamaica all the time mm-hmm. so um, I ended up going back to Jamaica like three times before I was like you want to try another country <laughs> <if> you, <like?" laughs> you know because we knew we loved Jamaica it was guaranteed fun and <laughs> okay yeah let's try another country and we picked Dominican Republic and we liked that and so then we pretty much just decided that we like traveling together and okay stuff that we wanted to keep going and it's funny you say that's what <laughs> it's funny you say you apply for your trip because that is the first time in a very long time I actually remember I don't even think I mentioned this on the podcast before the reason why I even applied for my passport was because some nigga told me he was going to take me someplace. I don't even remember where it was, but he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your passport. Come on. Like I'll take you. Don't even worry about it. I got you. So I went and got my little passport. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So you could be ready out. to get in flute out. And of course that never happened, but kudos to the friends that actually pulled up to the friend trip. How did that go? What was your experience traveling with friends? Did you enjoy it? And what made you transition from, and do you still do group trips? Like, is that something that you have held on to? Um, so to answer like the first part of the question, mm-hmm. I definitely um, liked the experience of traveling with my girlfriends. Okay. Um, so that that girl's trip scenario uh, was always um, a good idea for me. So. Mm-hmm. I, I, I liked doing it, but, um, I ended up going on my birthday trip, uh, with two different friends, not Simone. Cause we, you know, <laughs> it wasn't Simone, but, um, I went, I, I ended up going on a trip with two of my girlfriends. One of my girlfriends, I told her that, you know, I felt like her boyfriend was using her and that, you know, I just wanted to let her know that, you know, even if mm-hmm. she, chooses to proceed with the dude at least she could have it in the back of her mind somewhere that he may be you know using her <clears throat> and so um I told her that over dinner um in Amsterdam and um it was the night before my birthday and the next morning I woke up and she left me stranded in the hotel didn't leave me a letter didn't didn't tell me anything when I initially woke up I thought that they um I thought that my two friends were maybe downstairs having breakfast and mm-hmm. that I slept in late. And after I got out the shower and got dressed, I realized like they still wasn't back upstairs from dinner. And I was like, wait, where's their makeup and stuff? Like then I, then it just kind of hit me. And so they didn't even leave me a letter in on the, on the coffee table. Like we're gone. Like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just had to pretty much figure it out. And so I called them and I said, hey, like, where are y'all? And they was like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't like what you said at dinner. And by the way, um, I told someone so that you said something about her daughter. And I was like, wow. So I told you something about your boyfriend that you don't like. And now you're going to lie to our other friend and tell her I was talking about her kids. Like, basically tried to hmm. make the other girl leave me. You get what I'm saying? And so- yeah, yeah. Messy. <laughs> The second girl involved, I said to her, I said, we were in Paris for three days and then we got to Amsterdam. So we've already been together for about a week now. And she's never told you that I said anything about your kids. And now when I tell her something about her man, Mm -hmm. suddenly after she's been with you for seven days, I've said something about her kids. I was like, well, you know, I just feel like if you're, if you were down to leave me, without even having a conversation like oh yeah. she wants to leave but let's clarify what you say about my kids like let's okay just, like, well let's huddle together real quick before mm-hmm. we part ways what did you say about my children like you you were willing to leave me in a situation where you didn't know if I was going to be robbed raped you're leaving me by myself right. in another country you the left- day before your birthday the day before my birthday off of what someone said without ever having a conversation with me about it. I said, so we will all never be friends again because nothing Mm -hmm. happened to the point where y'all are leaving me for dead on foreign soil. Yeah. um, That was how I transitioned into solo travel to answer the second question, because (laughs) it was just like my, my friends that didn't have kids, I wasn't friends with them no more. And I was like really depressed because now I've went from, not only having the worst breakup of my life and calling off my wedding, like, you know, 13 days before. Oh my God. 
Yeah, but also four months later, I've lost two friends in the same day and I didn't do anything. So it was a really, really hard yeah. time in my life. And because of that, I didn't really trust women. I didn't want to be around women. So I, mm -hmm. you know, when you ask like, hey, how did you transition into solo travel? I got my heart broken by women. And I was just like, you know what? Um, I don't want to meet any other friends and make friends because what if I say something to the girl that she don't like? And the next thing you know, it's a fight. Or if, yeah. what if I tell you my honest opinion about something respectfully? And you just leave me in another country. Like, so then I was afraid to trust people. So yeah. it was safer it, mentally, emotionally for me, it was safer to be solo because it, it was less vulnerability. Like, you know, right. I'm not going to let anybody be able to, you know, pump fly on me real fast over, yeah. dumb, over a man, you know, so. A no good one at that. Like, so I was just like, okay, let me just uh, do solo. Um, and then for the third question, you said like, do, do I still do group trips and stuff like that? It took like a many years, okay. but now I'm open to like traveling with other women and starting to trust other women. Like, cause I have lots of girlfriends, but as soon as they be like, yeah, like, do y'all all, all want to go out together? I'm immediately like, no, because I'm like, mm -hmm. what if something go wrong and I get left or what, what if something happens? Because you cannot trust these people now. Like, so I have this vulnerability where I don't want people that close to me yeah. because I'm afraid of how they might treat me. So I've just literally allowed myself to start like planning group trips with other girls now my company travel like a boss we do group trips together within the community so it's okay. a group retreat between me and my clients who come to me to learn how to solo travel so it's a bonding experience for oh us. nice so I'm not afraid that they're going to leave because they're here to learn from me directly so mm -hmm. it, it feels safer so I'm just now starting to let my guard down and have healthy uh relationships with people and not think that that they may hurt me well, first of all, I'm sorry that that's how you came into travel. Like I <laughs> never wish like solo a traumatic, uh -huh. well, yes, a uh, solo travel. I never wish to hear that from or for anyone. Like it, I, I would never want that possibility for something as beautiful as travel to, you know, get sullied possibly like that by other people. Like I, I know that I, waited for so long to travel because similar to you all of my friends had kids everybody had you know a partner so it's just like huh, so I can kind of go when I want to go you gotta wait on okay you you gotta wait for okay so it was like mm, it was really looking <laughs> like it wasn't going to be for me but instead of letting other people's decisions and what other people had going on get in the way we had that similar experience of, I'm going to figure it out by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get out here. And I wonder now for you, what was the first country where you felt like, okay, no, I got this. Like, this is, this is my new bag. This is, we're here now. What was that like for you? Um, so that euphoric, amazing experience for me was Paris. Okay. Uh, so, you know, most people are so afraid of taking their first solo trip, but I had just gotten left on vacation on my birthday in a whole nother country by two girls. So for me, my perspective, my POV was like, I'm not scared of whatever could go wrong because I don't think anything worse can happen to me at this point. All I got mm -hmm. is me. There's no other plan. This, you know what I mean? If I don't like this experience, I'm going to experiment with my first solo trip. If I don't like this experience, I'll never solo travel again. And I'll just mm -hmm. wait till I make new friends with people who have more flexibility. Okay. Um, so I didn't intend to be a solo traveler. It was just more so like an experiment. And that place was Paris. And Paris had been on my bucket list for so long that I teach women all the time. If you want to take your first solo trip, choose a country that is always at the top of your bucket list. So that way, like that excitement for seeing Bora Bora or okay. Paris you know, will kind of decrease or like kind of overshadow the anxiety of, oh my God, I'm being alone. I'm, I'm going to be by myself in Paris, you know? Um, so yeah, that country for me was Paris. Paris was country number one. Um, well, it's not a country. France was country number mm -hmm. one. Solo. And that was the first time you went solo. So it was like, it, 
the shit kind of clicked real early for you. It, it was, it clicked right then and there. And I was like, uh, you know, the song say he snatched, he sold. Like I was sold. Girl. Okay. <laughs> it was there. So from those experiences, which, and not even like because of what the country was more so because of what the experience was for you, which trip would you possibly say comes, well, not even possibly say what comes to mind first in terms of a trip that you learned the most from that you're able to then impart information to other people? Like where in that 58 solo that where in there did some, like, do you think you learned the most? I think that's a brilliant question. My question, my answer is going to be a little bit more broad mm -hmm. um, because I, I feel like every single country I was, because I was um, having stimulation from all these different, th these different things that I've never experienced before, culture, sounds, food, people, languages, uh, religion. So every different country I learned something different about myself. I was able to make peace with a different part of myself. Mm. Maybe a, one part of myself healed. And it's like all the things that I didn't like, um, I was able to kind of shed them and leave them in Paris. And then the things that I liked about myself that I learned, I took them with me and I went to London from there. And then every different country that I went to, I was able to make peace or let something go, leave it in London. And then from here, we are in Budapest or, or Prague today. And I'm learning something else about myself now that I'm by myself in country number four. And then, mm -hmm. so every, so I can't even say that there was one particular space where um, I would say that I learned the most because I think that I had made peace with myself on the first solo trip that my evolution was going to take a lifetime. And that mm -hmm. even when I took my last breath, I still probably wouldn't be who I thought I could be yet. But that's why I need more than one lifetime. So I would hate to kind of concentrate it and say that I learned a lot more. But I, but I would say um, that in terms of just being able to go deeper and be a little bit more grounded, because that's what what was making me feel good at the time. I was like my personal dopamine dealer. Okay, <laughs> travel was my dopamine. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> But I think one of the most grounding experiences for me uh, was probably going to Nelson Mandela's house and like looking at the bullet holes that mm -hmm. was still, you know, in his house and um, spending time in the Seychelles and just looking over my shoulder before I left the beach saying like, yeah, I'll be back, you know, and I don't know. I have so many different experiences that I was like, wow, I can take from this or the time we were in okay. Sri Lanka and we, we, we took the train to Ella. And, you know, so every I, I can I have different experiences. I, I it's you're so adorable. I love the excitement. Like I okay. like it's poor. It's glowing out of you. And I, I love that for you. My question then is, what does that process look like for you? So. I know that for me, I am, um, I believe in intentional travel. That's my bag. I believe in really, for me, that process, like the best way for me to, I think, ask this is like with the like example, right? So in my process of growth through travel, if you will, I like to be very intentional with making sure that I check in with where I am in that space, right? Like, what do I have going on back home? What is bothering me? What is working for me? What's not working for me? Like, I am very intentional about doing um, an assessment and taking time instead, and not instead of, but in addition to getting wrapped up, running around, oh, this is cute. This is cute. Let's go here. Let's do that. What, well, what's cute about me? What's, what am I have to, what do I have to do next? Like, I ask these questions. Like, I make sure to be present with myself as much as I am also engaging in new activities and, oh, I can't hike a, a, a rainforest in Queens, so I'm going to do one here, or I can't taste this here, or I've never tried this before. So while I'm 
very uh, also intentional about having new experiences, I make sure to be present for myself. So I will cancel some shit if it doesn't feel right that day. I will change my mind. I will leave intentional empty days. I will wait till the last minute to decide something because, well, I feel like this today, but I don't know what I'm gonna feel like tomorrow. So what does your process look like for you? And do you have a process? If you don't, what is it that you feel your general patterns look like in terms of being able to enjoy your trips? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I love that you touched on that, D, because um, I tell people all the time, I don't post on social media unless I'm actively traveling at the moment. Um, because for me, um, I, I care about what's in alignment in the path of the least resistance. So if mm-hmm. something doesn't feel right or it feels uncomfortable, then I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I, I don't, I don't want to choose this path. So um, I'm actually very intentional about um, making sure that I'm actually not going like, oh, everybody's going to Greece because it's August. So we're good. We have to have the European content this summer, you know, every summer European okay. content, everyone. So don't go to Africa this summer. Cause you're not going to get the likes. So for me, it doesn't work like that for me. <laughs> I'm like super intentional about how I want to feel. I have a map that, uh, is above my bed. Um, so every morning when I wake up, I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling a lot like Africa. Um, so yeah, for me, my, the way that I choose is just by seeing like, what is in alignment with me? How do I feel? Um, also hotel partnerships too. Cause I might like email a couple of hotels. And if one of them is like, are we going to give you five nights? And I'm like, okay, well, Africa it is because right. <laughs> this is who gave us the, the free hotels. So mm-hmm. there's a few easy decision, things. right? Easy decision. Um, so there's a few things, but the most thing is like, well, how do I feel? Am I feeling like I just want to lay low for a while? Cause if so, then I know I'm going to Bali. Mm -hmm. So it's cheap. I could be there for a long time and it's really chill, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, girl, that's how I figure out where I'm going next. So when you are, have you, are you still traveling solo or do you like mix your trips in? Like, do you travel with friends or are you still mostly doing your solo trips? I'm uh, 99% solo. Travel Like a Boss does have group trips within the community of the people who buy my mm-hmm. We do group trips every three months. Okay. So in those solo trips, what are some of the tips that you feel you find people? So like everyone, I'm trying to work around and ask around like, well, what are your top tri- uh, tips for solo travelers, right? Because I feel like that soundbite is everywhere. What I want to know is what are your non-traditional tips, right? Like I know that there are certain things, everybody's personal experience is going to be different. And I think that the way we learned some of the things that we give other people as tips s- tend to stand out as why that tip is important, right? So if you have like a really big experience, like, yo, I ended up walking three hours to my hotel because I left my charger in the hotel. So I always encourage X, Y, and Z. So that is one of my primary tips. Do you have any tips that you give that come from like a space of, yeah, girl, I had to really learn this the hard way. So this is why I make sure to tell you that this is something you should try to do or avoid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have uh, lots of them. I'll, I'll give you just three. Right? Okay. Um, so let's see. The first one is people um, often when they book a hotel, they never, ever ask the hotel, is the front desk 24 hours or do y'all Ooh. close after a certain time? Okay. You people, we just assume that they're going to be downstairs, even if we call them at 12 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so, um, on my first solo trip to Paris, um, I took a ride along the sea and river D and, um, it was like the last cruise on the CM River. And if you like research the Eiffel Tower, because I was researching everything on Google because I was scared because it was my first solo trip. So any dumb fact, I wanted to know it before I went by myself, right? <laughs> and so, 
So girl, um, it said that at one o'clock in the morning, so the Eiffel Tower lights up and does a, a, a glitter show every hour on the hour until one o'clock in the morning. But oh. on the last show um, at 1 a.m., there's going to be a finality, a finale. And all the other shows all night was five minutes. The one at 1 a.m. is 10 minutes. And okay. so um, I decided to take the boat cruise closer to 1 a.m. So on the dinner boat cruise, it was like dinner, food, a band, everything. Oh, nice. Rose Hey, honey. So, you know, I'm just oh, you know, even spinning myself. Girl. Yeah. So, like I was having a good time. I got off and I waited at the foot of the Eiffel Tower at one o'clock in the morning for the show to start. Cause it was like my big whimsical first solo trip. And it was in a, a wonderful place like Paris. Right. So I was excited about every little dumb touristy thing, you know? <laughs> yep. Well, I still get excited about touristy shit. And I might absolutely go see the touristy shit because why the fuck not Cause why because i'm here right so um i waited for the show the show started it was beautiful and from there i walked to the to the hotel because it really was close enough to walk okay so um i walked to the hotel and when i got back to the hotel i looked inside my ysl kate bag like mm-hmm. uh, so you so you know it's not that many pockets on it it's just one flap a ysl okay. flap it's just one flap i open up the flap and my bank card all my stuff is in there but the but the fob card to uh to put up to the hotel door is not in the is not in the in the purse and when I peer through the glass I can see that the entire lobby is dark but at the front desk there's a little desk light on I'm like oh I'm fucked so um Damn. So at this point it's about like 1 15 in the morning in Paris and uh, I called my mother. It's probably like seven o'clock in the evening in New Jersey. So, you know, cause you know, Paris is ahead. So I called my mom, it's not late for her. I okay. said, hey, um, I can't seem to find my fob key to get back into the hotel. And it looks like they're closed. I'm looking through the window, nobody's there. And um, she said, well, let me Google the hotel. So she Googled the hotel and it said on Google that their hours were like 10 or something. So I guess that since it was a boutique hotel, oh. They're not yeah. there all the time, you know? So, um, so I said, oh, what should I do? Cause all my stuff is upstairs. Like, you know, yeah. well, my mom said, well, let me, let's, let's go on Expedia and let's look up another hotel for you. That's within walking distance. Okay. I'll stand on the phone with you and you'll, and you have your bank card in your bag. Right. I said, yeah, my mm-hmm. bank card, my license is here, but that five key is not. So, um, I walked uh, like a block or two to another hotel, stayed on the phone with my mom. And that was it. Okay. And, and and I and at seven o'clock in the morning, I woke up and then I walked right back around the corner and they let me in. And so I always tell ladies, ask if the front desk closes at a certain time. And if it does, who can you reach out to? Let's say, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's in the middle of the night and you're like, shit, like the power went out or, you mm-hmm. know, like in the middle. Because you're like, I'm, I was in Bangkok. The power was going out like every 10 minutes in Thailand. It was so hot. Yeah. And yeah. like, um, in Antigua Barbuda, you know, I've been living in Antigua Barbuda, the, the, sometimes they have power outages and the, you know, you need a generator in your backyard. So I always ask like, Hey, if y'all do the front desk close at a certain time, if so, what is the WhatsApp number so that mm-hmm. way I can reach somebody or, you know, whatever. Right, um, right, right. That's tip number one, ask them, you know, if the front desk close, whatever tip number two. I'm sorry to stop you. Did you end up booking another room at that other hotel that you walked to? Or did you like just sit in the lobby? No, no, no. I, I booked the room and stayed there overnight. So I learned uh, with the hard way. Mm. So that's why I created Travel Like a Boss. So people don't have to learn the hard way. Okay. I'd be big this. I'd be so fucking pissed. Damn, like nobody was coming in or out. I just would really not want to spend that fucking money again. Like I already have a hotel. I know, but it was like, I was on the phone with my mom and like, literally it's one. You don't want to just sit outside on the street. Yeah. That's like, especially if it's depending on what it looked like. No, it was pretty safe, but I was still like, you know what? I still learned my lesson. Like that $70 that I spent, I was like, okay, we never going through this again. Lesson learned. Right. So, um, so second tip that I, uh, would definitely give women, um, Put an air tag in your luggage. 
you okay. know, like people always say like, you know, they have like lost luggage and all that other stuff. Definitely feel free to put an air tag in your luggage. Um, also, uh, like tip number two, a lot of women talk to me about like safety. Mm-hmm. Um, most people don't know that um, they can actually be in contact with the U.S. Embassy in every country that they go to by enrolling in the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. So, you know, it's a free service to U.S. citizens. So if you guys, you know, are traveling abroad, you can always check in with the local U.S. Embassy in that country. So most people just don't know about that. I would also um, encourage women to make sure that um, I already told you guys to have the WhatsApp number, you know, yeah. or like the local number. If you're staying with an Airbnb host or whatever, ask them for a number off of that Airbnb app because let's say you go to check in and the key doesn't work and it's one o'clock in the morning they may not check this Airbnb app until tomorrow right. you have a WhatsApp number for them already you can easily get in contact with them off the app if you know something should go wrong so yeah. um I I definitely would encourage um women to maybe you know use those three tips okay So what do you find people come to you the most for, right? So if someone is curious as to whether or not your course would be appropriate for them, if they're nervous about coming um, solo travel, or if they want to just do it safely, if they want to know where Black women generally feel safe, like who do you find your, I don't want to say like, I guess biggest, not biggest, that's not really what I mean. I try to make sure I use my words. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Like the way that I'm saying in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Like, what do you find people ask you the most, right? Like not necessarily, um, or no, I don't want to know that. I want to know, what do you think you end up being surprised people are coming to you for? Like, what are some of the reasons why people have sought out your um, advice or consultation or um, opinion suggestions? What do people come to you that surprises you for? Because obviously it's, you know, you do safe travel, you do solo travel. But I wonder if you've ever had someone come and say, well, I actually was curious about. And it was just like, oh, okay. Good point. Has that ever happened? Do you have any of those that you would think that? Because I'm thinking the obvious people that know that they want to to look into whether or not like, oh, this is a cute, this is a cute page to look at. But for the person that doesn't yet know that you're for them, do you think you could say, no, I got you on this too? Yeah. So um, a lot of the times when people come to me on the surface, it seems like they just want to solo travel. So they're ready to purchase my coaching program. Mm -hmm. But if you dive deeper and get a chance to talk about, you know, what their goals are and why it's important to them. So you can make a customized roadmap to help them get started with their solo travel journey and establish those goals. And then what are measurable milestones and, you know, we reverse engineer it back. A lot of the times it's not that they just want to solo travel. That's like a part of it. But then when you dive deeper, they're like, you know what? I I went through a divorce and he never wanted to go nowhere. And I decided that I want to do something for me. So this is really a self-expression for me to, to prove that I'm, I'm dependent on myself. Mm. I'm independent of someone else and I can rely on myself. So it's more of a personal accomplishment. So um, it's like the surface answer is, oh, people, you know, they want, they come to me because they want to solo travel, but that's really surface. When you get a chance to hear their story, someone's like, you know what, my mom died last year. And I decided that if, you know, life is too short. So I would like to take my first solo trip out of Texas, but I'm the only child. So I just want some help with doing that. But I know my mom wouldn't want me to just sit here. And after she passed, I don't want to. And so everybody has their own personal thing that's driving them towards the, um, this desired outcome. The desired outcome is not even what they really Mm -hmm. Well, like I want to solo travel. No, I want to make my mom proud. I want to make myself proud. Uh, You know, so those are the things that always get me. That's why whenever I'm working with women, I'm like, tell me why you're doing this because you know, I'm, I'm not a cookie cutter person. Every man or woman mm-hmm. that I work with, I'm working with them to help them achieve their specific travel goals. So let's talk about why this is all important to you right now. 
you know, mm-hmm. the real reason. And they, they're they happy to share. That's one of the things I think I may have been the most um, surprised to learn about travel is that it's not really about the destination, right? Like it's not about necessarily the trip. And that's one of the things that I love most about this podcast because a lot of times you don't know what you don't know before you know it. And I think that if more people understood how much you can actually receive from traveling and you don't, and you don't even have to go far, like it doesn't have to necessarily be an international trip. Like you don't have to go to Zanzibar. You don't have to be someplace exotic. Like I live in New York. I could be fucking Connecticut was probably the best day of my life. Like we had the most incredible day. We were there from Saturday to Sunday afternoon. Like, Uh little bit more than 24 hours and it wasn't just like going to Connecticut it wasn't like a international trip it was time spent with somebody that I really care about time spent doing new and exciting things with somebody that I love and it's it was experienced because we stepped outside of our comfort zone. It was experienced because we were open to what the experience of being someplace new could give us. And Mm -hmm. I am really surprised that you do like individual coaching is it sounds like you don't do like, um, like just explain, like, how does your program work? Because if I'm thinking what I'm thinking, like, this is like this, Please just go ahead, because it sounds really engaging. Uh, It actually is really engaging, which is why I have a cap on how many people I can actually take. Got it. Um, Okay. Yeah. So uh, Travel Like a Boss has um, a nine week one on one coaching program. Okay. And um, throughout those nine weeks, we coach every week one on one for 30 minutes to one hour. Mm -hmm. Um, So every week as you go throughout the course at the end of the week, we'll talk about like, you know, what you learned and I have homework assignments and then we have checklists, planning checklists, like we have a whole way to work it out and start bringing you through the process of uh, actually taking your first solo trip. Um, So that I can only take 10 women every nine weeks because I need you know, for this cohort to graduate. Absolutely. Um, And so um, what also happens is um, if I have a backlog, I have other courses, I have a five week course and a one week course. And those courses have no coaching from me. So you can at least get the basics and the foundation. If I'm too busy to take any more clients, you can still learn from me in an automated way. But Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. If I have the slots available and a person seems like a good fit, they seem like they're going to be committed and showing up every week, you know, throughout those nine weeks, then I'll, I'll go ahead and coach them one-on-one. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. And I, um, I actually had a, um, a coach and I can definitely attest to that one-on-one. It wasn't a travel coach. She was, um, a business coach and she was a gem. I, can't speak highly enough about her. Uh And that one-on-one interaction is kind of like with um, a therapist, sometimes like just saying things out loud. It's like, they're not, you'd be surprised how in your mind you think that they're going to give you all the answers, but you end up having a lot of the answers yourself. And it's just like, oh, I just needed somebody that knew what they were doing. Help me figure out exactly where I needed to go with what, you know, like what my Mm -hmm. goals were. So Mm -hmm. you've got the one-on-one coaching, you've got a five week and you've got a one week automated uh, coaching. Are they all related to taking like your first solo trip or do you offer different type of experiences? That's a great question. So um, I have the nine week course. That was my signature course. That was the first course that I came out with. And so when we started getting too many clients, I took the nine week course, I broke it up and I said, okay, without my coaching, if they follow these five modules, they can still achieve the desired outcome of ace in their first solo trip just with the first five weeks the other weeks six to nine require more of a one-on-one for me to walk you through everything mm-hmm. and if i'm booked with these people in the nine weeks in the five week program i won't even add these extra weeks because i know that i can't walk them through it i'm booked mm-hmm. so um actually 
the, the five week course is exactly the nine week course. It's just a shorter abridged version. Um, that's and available without to customers. Your secret sauce. Right. Well, I mean, they both got your secret sauce, but like, it's not your hand holding. It, You're I, not I'm not talking to them through throughout the process. Okay. So what kind of things do you think are, what kind of things make you stand out? Like, how is it? Because there are so many take a trip options available right now outside of it being you that is the magic because I feel like every individual person that offers a service has their person like who you are is who you are just the same there's a million different podcasts about travel but ain't none of them traveling shit because ain't none of them me like it is what it is you fuck with me or you don't and that's everybody's bag right so what is it that you do differently and it may and you sounded like you actually you mentioned like we reverse engineer, we see what they want to go. Is it that you're doing more of um, like intensive dive into why people want to travel that is helping them actually find that um, way to step out of fear? Or is it more so that you are like curating trips with them and you're booking trips with them? Um, so, you know, honestly, D, like when you say like, why me? I honestly think that a lot of people choose to uh, support travel like a boss because two things I'll say, not because of me, like, who am I? Like, I'm, I'm the same as everyone, every other girl. So there's nothing different about me or special about me more than the next girl. But I think why people choose travel like a boss, um, two reasons. Number one, intimacy. Like a lot of influencers that, you know, got Forbes and USA Today and SS Magazine, they don't have um, like where you can just travel with them. You get what I'm saying? Like most people don't allow that type of access to them. So I think people choose travel like a boss because the brand was built by somebody that they see that they can relate to. You know, so since I'm relatable, that makes travel like a boss better because I'm not this unreachable star or something like that. Um, they see my face, I'm on videos, we do webinars, and then they see the article. So that kind of adds to my credibility. Um, but I'm someone that they can relate to and I provide that level of intimacy. You know, like a girl with a hundred thousand followers is not like, hey, I'm hosting this group trip, like you guys can travel with me. So people that kind of um brings down people's level of skepticism with you when when access to you is not even that hard. So they're like, okay, well this may not be like a scam. Cause you know, people with the internet nowadays, people are just naturally suspicious of other people mm-hmm. you know so um so so yeah I think um intimacy is a big part about why people choose to uh patronize travel like a boss and um <clears throat> I think number two um I think that people get a lot of hope because you know if you've purchased a $2,000 product from me, then I'm pretty sure that you probably have read any of the articles about me. And you probably know that, yeah, I was like literally left on vacation by myself on my birthday in a foreign country where I knew no one. So I think people say, you know, they look at me and say like, you know what, if she could have that happen to her and go from that to solo travel in the world, then I can start like hers. She was thrown out into the pool and had to learn how to swim. Right. Me, I can actually follow actionable steps and work with somebody who's been doing this for a long time and plan it out and, and be more prepared. I'm not going to Paris with a friend and coming back with no one. So I think women like my story because it makes them feel like, well, if she can do it and live through it, then I can do it with the right knowledge, with the right support system, you know, with the right community. So it's more attainable to them. Right. So with that knowledge, what are some things that you swore by initially, but then learned? I actually don't really need this. Like if you have any packing um advice that you like people when you first start things I feel like this is done this is done this is done this checklist this checklist I've got this uh everything is all organized organized what are some things that you have shifted away from that you initially started with or things that you swore by that you realize like okay they're kind of just it's it's all camp like it's not really it's not necessary it's fun but Um, 
so the first thing was I always wanted to do hotel, hotel, hotel. And then I started doing Airbnbs and I was like, wow, I feel like this is like my own little apartment. So I started really liking the idea of an Airbnb. Um, so that was one thing I shifted away from where I didn't I love say, hearing that I have to be on a resort. I had to be on a resort like the whole time. I can't do anything else, you know? So I started opening my travel palette. Um, but then I went back to hotel chains because I'm like, you know what? Um, I get these Hilton points and then I can transfer it. And so okay. then I, I want to get the points because if I stay at Airbnb, I'm not getting anything for it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but with this, I could use the points, you know? So I, I switched back. But um, that was one thing that I moved away from that I wanted to try okay. different. Um, the next thing was when I started my solo travel journey, I was such a geek. I wrote everything down in a yellow notebook. Um, I do journals too. And and I wrote down, if something happened to me on my first solo trip, these are the two local hospitals in the area nearest to the hotel on Google Maps. And so when I first started traveling, I would always look for like, what's the address to the U.S. Embassy? How can I get an Airbnb or the hotel exactly closest to the U.S. Embassy? Plus, because, you know, it's less smoke around the U.S. Embassy because, you know, this is like, <laughs> whatever. So I was, you know, so and then I would always have to know what a hospital was. And after like trip 10, and I was like, you know what? Every time I stay close to a U.S. embassy, I might be way far away from all the tourist attractions that I actually came to this country to see. Like, and I was like, you know what? I'm feeling more confident about myself to use my common sense and my better judgment when I'm out partying or something. So that way I don't got to feel like, oh, I could only party close to the U.S. embassy because there's more mm-hmm. cameras when I'm going home. Like, you know, whatever. So there's a few things that I did. I was doing that. I was like, OK, this is O.D., Okay, so I can't really say OD because as long as it's something that allows you to enjoy yourself more and safety is one of those things, like when you feel safe, you move a little different. You know what I mean? You're more inclined to want to experience a little more. You may take more calculated risks. But I mean, yeah, you you might not have needed to necessarily, you know, stay a block from the hospital or whatever. But, you know, it's a fair. That was fair. I'll give you that. That was fair. And it was smart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I've never um, I don't think I have ever and not saying it as in, oh, yeah, I don't do it. You don't got to do it. But I'm just saying in my experience, I don't think I've ever like registered with an embassy or um. I think D.C. is the only place where I actually even noticed any of the embassies. And that's because some of them are just gorgeous. Some of them are really nice. uh, What do you call them? Uh, Townhouses that are, you know, along different Uber routes or whatever. Um, So do you have any other tips that you feel like free game? Like this is easily going to save you in any type of destination that you're in. Some work better with hot weather destinations, some work better with cold weather. Like, is there anything that you think you would suggest to people in terms of um, overall free game? Not necessarily in terms of booking, not necessarily in terms of uh, like packing or um, choosing accommodations, just like overall for the person in terms of being like headspace, like different calming or soothing or reaffirming or assuring tips that you can give people to kind of say like there's no reason for you to be scared to take a solo trip does that did that question make sense um yeah I think you're I think you're asking me like is there anything that you any advice that you can give somebody um that will just make them feel better about taking that first step boom yes thank you for hearing me okay 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 um yeah, actually, Girl, my titties are sweating down here. Oh, uh, if y'all watching the uh, the YouTube's, whew, girl, it is hot. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, girl, you're good. Do you want to move the fan closer? Mm-mm. Oh, OK, OK. OK. Don't worry about it. OK. Thank you. No, nah, no worries, girl. Um, Yeah. So I think that my tip for all the ladies and gents that are watching this wonderful podcast with D. Carrie. Um, the one thing that makes me feel great is that I didn't know who would be waiting for me on the other side of my fear and what that woman would look like. And I decided to do one thing different. 
because they say you get what you give. And I was at such a low place when I started my solo travel journey. I had already lost my man. I had already lost my friends. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anything else to lose, actually. So like when you're feeling low, like there's no other direction to go except up anyway. So like what can go else can go wrong, basically. And so I was like, you know what? I don't know what's next, um, but I'm already uncomfortable. So at this point, I'm open to all things new. I'm being uncomfortable ain't even a problem for me at this point. I've had everything taken from me. And when I decided to take my first solo trip, I did one thing different. And I took my nephew on his first solo trip. And I mean, I mean, like I took him on a, on a trip with me. Um, and at this point now he's 15 and he's been to seven different countries. And he says to me, oh, my 16th birthday, I wanted to be in London because I love the Tate Modern. And I said Mm -hmm. to him, you know, when I was 16, I didn't even think of stuff like that because that was not even available to me. I was not even dreaming about being seen. And I like, it was not even an option. It wasn't even a thought in my brain. I didn't even know anything about London or that I could go. And I told him, I said, because of what I showed you now, when you and y'all almost 40s like me, you'll treat your kids a lot different and your kids will see a lot. And so now we've been able to change the the trajectory or the standard of living for all of our descendants based off of one thing that I decided to do. And now he talk about he need to be at the Tate Modern next summer. So it's like, okay, I've been able to change my generate my family generation and what we think is normal. Now he thinks it's normal to have a 16th birthday party in London. So I was able to change his life, his kid's life, everything off of me doing something different. So my one piece of advice out there to anybody um, that will make them feel better about solo travel is do one thing different. You have no idea where it's going to take you. Um, Travel Like a Boss uh, is a million dollar company at this point. Um, Thank you, Ben. For all your hard work. Thank you, D. And um, I I wasn't expecting a million dollar company. I wasn't expecting Forbes features or Essence Magazine features or, you know, being on podcasts such as this. I got stranded on vacation on my birthday in another country and I had to start traveling solo. If I would have never made that one decision to try it out, just an experiment Mm -hmm. in Paris, you know, it would have never led to me helping 10,000 people. And this is all off of a mistake. Nothing is planned. So imagine if you actually put intention behind, I want to change my life and do one thing different and just see where it takes me. Even if it doesn't take me to be in a master solo travel, I learned different things about myself. And now I always travel with my husband maybe, but I'm still going to travel now. Just try one thing different. You never know what your destiny is going to look like after you do it. I love that. I absolutely love that. Not just, And I also love, I love that advice, but then I also love that this baby now has like a Seven. global, mm-hmm. a global uh, prism with which mm-hmm. to view mm-hmm. his options. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he, he's not confined to now. Now he is not just confined to what he knows. He knows that there is so much more out there and so much more to be interested in. And that now these are actual options, viable options that he can see himself being part of. And I, I, I love, love that about the babies. Like, what is this? What are they? Gen, they're Gen, Gen Z, right? Z. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My Gen Z baby. Them, them babies is doing a lot of things right. Them, the, some of the stuff they do, I just don't get. Right, right. Don't. However, other things, when I especially see them really like being ahead of where we were at that mm-hmm. age, you know what I mean? It's just, I, and I love that travel is part of that because travel does so much more for for yourself and <laughs> in your personhood than it actually than you ever can imagine that it can for you. So similar to that last question, what's one thing that you would suggest uh, people do? What's one thing that you would suggest that people or more than one if you have it that maybe they would think that they should do that they actually don't do that? Like opposite. Like what's something that it's it's not worth their time or it's actually a bad idea. Hmm. So one of the things that I always tell people don't do that um, 
do not go to an ATM machine in a foreign country. Okay. Why do you say that? Because like, I love ATMs. Yeah. So um, you don't want to go to an ATM machine and then like somebody is watching you and they're like, okay, well, we know that she has the money. Like we saw her at an ATM machine. I don't want you guys out here vulnerable about to get got because you stand at an ATM machine. You put the money in your pocket or whatever. If somebody watching you, they already know you got bread. Um, mm-hmm. And another thing, I always tell people like, even though you're bringing your debit card with you, like that direct deposit money, girl, do not use that card while you're abroad. Not because of the foreign transaction fees, but because if you're in Paris and somebody copied that card and it's identity theft and they don't charge $3,000 worth of stuff, that's your real cash hands money. Versus if you bring your debit card, but just use your AMX or your Chase Sapphire. If somebody copied a card and it's identity theft, girl, they got Chase money. (laughs) <laughs> they don't got my money like you know so I like um, that even though people you know always say like oh yeah I bring my card or whatever I'm like um no you can bring your debit card but your debit card should never be your primary uh you know method of payment um another thing that I I would probably tell people not to do like I said the ATM thing I always tell people like you know bring cash if you can and you can request the cash uh, like the foreign currency from your bank ahead of time Mm -hmm. so um instead of me having all these atm fees of five euros five euros plus the foreign transaction fee for it um i went to chase bank and um i asked them for three thousand euros two weeks ahead of time and they said it's a 25 dollar flat fee because you already have an account here i paid a 25 dollar flat fee and i had the euros with me so i didn't have to worry about an exchange or any foreign transaction fees or it's being you know at an ATM you like you know whatever because I pretty much came um Mm -hmm. with the money from my bank okay so a few final rapid questions sure carry on or check bag carry on because I don't want my trip to be like I'll be waiting at this baggage claim for like an hour my vacation starts Mm -hmm. with the plane I'm done with this Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here waiting on this luggage thing but you know some countries like for instance like let's say you go to Europe and you're in Italy you're like you know what we're in Italy we might as well go to Greece and then we might as well go to Turkey and then fuck it we in Dubai now like it's over Mm -hmm. so it's like why would I pay money to come back to London when I'm already in Paris I might as well go for the weekend if we want Belgian waffles we in Paris that's a two-hour fight guess we going to Belgium for these waffles while we over here so sometimes even though I'm team carry on sometimes just based on um like how I'm moving because I'm mm-hmm. the type of person D that I'm like gone to November I'm, okay. like, I'm going to November so when I leave the house I'm like I got a one-way ticket to Paris from there I might end up in Amsterdam, might end up in Ibiza. And from there, I don't know, I'm in, I'm in Morocco. Like I took the Gibraltar and I'm now I'm in Morocco. From <laughs> so it's like, I never know when I'll be back in the United States or whatever. So um, sometimes I do have to have a check bag because I just don't know how long I'm going to be gone and I need what I need while I'm away. Fair. Fair. Okay. Beach or the city? Beach. Okay. What seat do you take? I'll or you take the window? Window seat. And you already answered, I was going to do Airbnb or hotel. And I think you answered that you're more of a hotel person now. Okay. Personally, I'm an Airbnb girl Mm -hmm. only because in my mind, I want a community experience. Mm -hmm. I want to feel as if I am part of the, um, the area that I'm actually trying to visit. Like I want to pop out and be like, oh shit, let me see what they corner store got or damn, I don't, mm, these forks in here look a little janky. Let me go get a box of plastic forks or Mm -hmm. I'm not using this coffee machine because it looks like shit. I'm gonna go here. So I really enjoyed that feeling of being part of a community when I stay at an Airbnb. And also in my mind, I feel as if I look less um, conspicuous. Like if I'm walking out of a hotel, I feel like, Mm -hmm. okay, regardless of whether or not I keep my mouth shut and don't really say anything and try to blend in with locals, you're, I feel as if you're going to make that assumption that walking out of a hotel, I'm a tourist, right? So I would rather walk out of somebody's house and let you think maybe I'm somebody's cousin, maybe I'm somebody's friend, maybe I'm just, you know, here on like an extended work study or something like that. But as long yeah. that's another thing that I do. I'm very good for keeping my mouth shut and just seeing what's happening. Like, let me see how far I could go before somebody knows I'm not from here. And generally, I mean, that's a little bit probably 
pride on my end because I'm pretty sure people realize I'm not from wherever the fuck I am. But in some places, it really be paying it's off. Hard. Sometimes yeah. it works, and they just, especially in I think Spanish speaking countries, people will just walk up and well. Black Spanish speaking countries, people will just walk up and start speaking to me. And I'd be like, ah, buenas, pero no hablas de español poquito. Right, right, right. That's the most that I, that I got. But I am absolutely um, an Airbnb girl. And I also just like, I want more space. Like I Probably want right, the right. space. I want a little mini fridge. Give me your, give me a stove. Maybe mm-hmm. I want to fry an egg today, but that's, and yeah. That's my thing. I really right, like right, Airbnbs right. because they just feel more um, authentic. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a Marriott is a Marriott is a Marriott, but I also don't get no points. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, I get it. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not winning on that. end, But to your point, Airbnb, like, what's good with that? Yeah. Like, I was using. We be Airbnb. out here. Yeah. Like, I was like, you know what? I don't get any kickback from. Yeah. If I book. 10 rooms or whatever like I'm not getting anything back and then when they charge me a cleaning fee I'm like you know what I might as well just go to a hotel you charging me a cleaning fee and then they be having like the rules and yeah I barely follow those Uh, yeah like I'm like for all of this like leave the clothes here dude I was like you know what I just need to go to a hotel and I'm getting I feel you so I I just ended up their prices went up so much Airbnb that I was like you know I just need to get a hotel anyway I I agree I agree. I agree. The prices are not where they used to be, but something about hotels, I don't know. Like, I know that when I compare, like when I'm looking at the different prices, I feel like if I am not like in the middle of the city center, I don't want to stay at your hotel. You'd have to have like a wild, well, where do you look to book your hotel? Well, no, you actually, you're a chain girl, right? Like you go to the different hotel chains that you like and you do your, unless I got a partnership, I'm not saying nowhere where I can't get the points. Cause if I'm a pay, if I give Airbnb $10 or if I give uh, it's got to work for you. I just want the money to recycle itself for me. So yeah. if they're not going to give me anything, but Hilton's going to give me a thousand points uh, per dollar or 10 points per dollar. I'm like, well, you know what? This will give me a thousand points. I could put that on the next hotel, stay the next mm-hmm. hotel, whatever. So it just didn't benefit me to do anything with Airbnb anymore. I mean, when you put it that way, that makes sense. Because ultimately, sense. I'm getting more free stays. And like, let's say that I have 30 free nights, 30, um, let's say I stayed like 30 nights this year. And then um, my sign up bonus was like 150,000 points. And then I got like three free nights. Well, if I'm hosting a travel like a boss group trip for 10 girls at a hotel, the first three nights for the, for some of the girls are even free because, Mm -hmm. you know, and then now we making more points because I just booked seven more hotel rooms then for this group trip. And now I'm getting the points back. So it's like, it really, I really can circulate my resources better. Like I make that money for the hotel room actually come back to me. All right. That makes sense. I think I might have to look into that. I might have to look into that. Do you have affiliate links? Um, or any I, have, of those? I got affiliate links for like credit cards. Um, okay. Yeah. Cause I so, get points and stuff like, so. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I got some, I recommended my dad for that mm-hmm. MX. <laughs> I got them points. My brother recommended me. He got yeah. his. And yeah. then I recommend my dad. And Y'all I got mine. Y'all know what it is. Y'all yep. know what it is. I ended up doing, was that Costa Rica? I think my Amex points paid for my Costa Rica trip. I ended up going to and from my, I think it was my flight. I don't think it was the hotel, but it definitely took care of um, that flight. Oh, since I'm on uh, points, before I forget to tell y'all. So if you get an email, say you take a JetBlue flight and they send you an email about a survey, They'll give you 400 points just for signing up and completing a survey. I made 500 points like in an hour the other day, taking random ass surveys. Like yes. they're random surveys about whatever they, I, and I mean, very random. It's not like surveys. Mm-hmm. How was your flight? How was the food? Were you comfortable? It's stuff like, have you heard of these companies? They'll ask you about nine different companies. And then randomly after one of those, okay, you've been ran- you've been selected to answer a survey about Deloitte. And then it's like, I don't know shit about Deloitte. And they tell you, even if you don't know, 
answer to the best of your ability or to the what you know to what your perception of these people is free fucking points i don't have to spend no money all it is is spending time so you do have to spend the time but what i appreciate about appreciate about these little surveys is that it'll tell you an f an estimate of how long the survey should take you and how many points you're going to get so 500 points in like an hour and i did it while i was watching like hgtv it's right. not even anything that is taxing or stressful. You're clicking yes, no, one, uh, one through seven and shit like that. Right, so right, 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 right. if you are trying to get them points up, yeah, that's another resource. And it goes I into your, um, your bank relatively quickly. So if y'all got it as an option, I personally would wait until you got the sign up bonus. But okay, if okay, you okay. don't want to wait, because it was 400 points just for taking one. So other than that, like I'd say the most that I've seen a survey offer is like 90 points. So you could get relatively decent points, but that's going to be like a 39 minute survey or a 27 minute survey. So just want to throw that out there for y'all. If you in the, um, you got free time, you don't even need a lot of free time. They do have like 10 minute surveys. If you commit to just doing a couple of minutes, you know, out of your week, then Take you some surveys and before you know it, you're going to just rack up some points because there is nothing more frustrating than being this close to mm-hmm. getting like that one way ticket, at least to part of your trip. Or that's another thing I like booking, at least when I was doing solo. Now that it's two of us, it's a little more uh, logistics. I don't like it, but I like traveling with him. Let me not put that out there. Love traveling with him. But yeah. the logistics of doing two people. Yeah. I don't forget that you can absolutely. um you can book one ways. You can absolutely oh, get it. Your- girl. Yeah. But the only yeah. thing is the country just wants to see that you're leaving. So mm-hmm. I always tell people like sometimes they'd be like, hold on, you got a one way ticket into London. We're not letting you in the UK. You're going to try to stay. Mm-hmm. And so they might deny you entry into a country. They want to see that you're going to leave. So if you guys are flying to a country, just because I fly to Paris, like I said, don't mean I'm flying back from Paris. I might get to Paris and be like, yo, I'm going to be in Prague and in Budapest. And then from there, I'm just going to be in Italy. Right. So just guys, if you if it comes down to it and you about to leave and you only on a one way, look up the country that's nearest, the closest and book your flight out. So if London is close to Paris and you just on a one way, at least book pa- London. So that way, when you come through the Paris airport, they're not thinking that you're going to try to stay. You have a yeah. flight out to London yeah. and it's probably only like $12 or like, you know, $20, you know, to get around Europe is cheap, but at yep. least buy a cheaper flight. I was going to Bali and my visa was 90 days. So I said, well, you know, oh, no, I'm sorry. My visa was 60 days. I was mm-hmm. on a 60 day visa on arrival and I booked a flight for $30 to Singapore on my Ooh. 59th day from 59th days from when I was going. I didn't know that I was going to Singapore. I said, look, I'm just spending this stupid $30 so that way they don't hassle me at the border. And right, when right, right. I went to Bali, I didn't go to Singapore. I wasted, it was $30. Right. From, I went to Sri Lanka, but mm-hmm. I at least had something to get me out of the country, like to Correct. get me in and get me out. So. Correct. So the point is, make sure you have a flight that leaves from that country so they don't tell that ass no. You can't come. Right, right. But, but what I do you love one ways. Mm-hmm. And what you could also do is in terms of your one way, if you are, say, on a coastal in a coastal city or if you are in a city that doesn't necessarily have a really popular international hub or a hub that you like, you can use those points to get you to possibly an airport that might be cheaper. I know that when I went to um, Alberta, I was I live in New York, so flying from and it was a trip with my homegirl. So it was like, she was there on like Tuesday to Sunday. I don't know why the fuck that was the girl, but I ended up doing Seattle Mm -hmm. for the weekend prior. Plus Mm -hmm. it's cheaper to get to Alberta from Seattle. So I ended up having enough points that I flew to Seattle (laughs) for free, had a good black ass time in Seattle for the weekend. And then I had the much cheaper flight from Seattle to Alberta because they're fucking closer. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, completely out of the country. It can just get you to some place where getting to whatever country you want to get to might be a little bit cheaper. So where can the people find you team? You've given us all this information and you've got all of these different, um, options in terms of working with you, whether it be one-on-one or just, a. Mm-hmm 
the five week or the one week course, but where can they find you? Where can they see what you have off that you have available as offers and find out if they are a great match to be part of your crew? Um, so you guys can follow me on Instagram at the passport abuser. Uh, you guys can also get on the website. The website is travel like a boss and boss is spelled B-A-W-S-E. So travel like a boss.com. And there uh, you can uh, go onto the coaching tab and select uh, to select schedule a consultation with me one-on-one and from there either myself or my staff will complete uh we'll have you complete an intake form before we get on the phone with you we will look at the intake form see the way you're answering the questions and see like okay are you a good fit from there we'll get on the phone and then we'll see because you know Mm -hmm. I am traveling with people and you know for that we just have to make sure that we're screening people really well because this is a community that we have yeah. to keep safe and all these women are traveling together i'm traveling with uh you guys as well so i just want to make sure that we are screening people so we don't take anybody's money um unless we have spoken to you okay okay that of course obviously will be in the description below so that you guys can get there easily. And I want to finish this out by reminding everybody that travel is so much more than vacation. We have just spent all of this time explaining to y'all how we have grown from these experiences, both solo with friends and the opportunity, uh, that same opportunity lies for you. Like it, it's, there's nothing special about us that we're able to benefit from travel differently than you may be able to benefit from travel. It's just that we've already done it. If you haven't already, <laughs> you've got two very, very open examples here. And we are both here for, you know, hit us up on the social medias. We have different options available for you to learn more from us. There are so many different the opportunities are there and those opportunities don't just wait for us. Like they're there for you. Also, it is there for you to not just experience, but to also grow from. So checking out travel, like a boss.com, the passport abuser on the Instagrams. Do you have a Twitter? I don't have a Twitter. Okay. Yeah. I just like rediscovered Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter since I was like in my early twenties and I jumped back on and it was just like, Oh my gosh. I actually like this again. So there are so many different places of information and y'all will come across. I know I will come across like the most encouraging and the most ooh, cringy. So and it's just, yeah, like there's, I like Twitter. So check Twitter out. Y'all you can find me on there too. Twitter. Yeah. Twitter is a good fucking time. And I like Twitter because you can just be, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, a voyeur like you don't necessarily have oh, to participate okay. you know what I mean okay yeah mm-hmm. it's not that you get less or more well I mean I'm sure you get more when you engage but okay. like it's a, it's a good time I think it's fun right. it's entertaining for me but is there okay. anything else you would like to tell the people any um, closing remarks uh yeah I think you know the audience I love that you've engendered such a wonderful audience so um you guys are already bosses you just have to travel like one that's it thank you thank you thank you so much for your time Kim. i greatly appreciate you being here with me today and for sharing your story and your message with the audience we are traveling shit appreciate you thank you so much thank you guys for having me all right y'all we will see oh don't forget don't forget don't forget don't forget august 21st the first live traveling shit episode yay i'm so excited for that pull up um, the link to RSVP to the event is travelingshippodcast.com slash events. I am having a conversation with three of my favorite people. I've got Namery from Taji Magazine. I've got Wanda from Black Women Travel Podcast. And I've got Shira of Black Girl World Traveler. And we'll be having a discussion that is based on the James Baldwin essay, The Discovery of What It Means to Be an American. I did an episode, I want to say episode 121, where I discussed how literature actually um, has either encouraged me to travel to certain destinations and how it's also 
really shaped the way I experienced myself in certain destinations. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a conversation that I wanted to have in a box. Like I wanted to have other women with this conversation. And one of the things that is very prevalent and I think really in our social consciousness right now as Black women and Black people in general is the idea of leaving the United States to try to disassociate and leave behind those really um, racy kind of nuanced racial experiences, right? But have you considered the baggage that you will also bring with you to this country that you are going to to kind of escape and leave you're still the same person for the most part until you actually embrace whatever that change is going to be for you and what does that experience look like where on your hierarchy of self does blackness fall and I'm really looking forward to having that conversation and these women are all entrepreneurs they are digital nomads and Um, Shira just started her journey as a digital nomad. Wanda's been going strong from 2016. And Nay has been an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. for basically as long as I've known Nay. I feel like Nay has uh, generally worked for herself in some capacity. Um, And I wanted to have that conversation with women at different stages and in different Mm -hmm. areas of, well, we all in the same area of Blackness. We've all been Black for our whole lives. But different stages of working for ourselves and being in different areas of the world so that we can kind of say, well, how did that happen for you? What did it look like for you? How are you able yeah. to navigate those feelings in other countries surrounded by different people? So that is a free event. It's going to be Sunday, August 21st uh-huh. at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh-huh. um, on every girl's basic link at Zoom, like it'll be there just because it's easy. And I feel like so many people from a lot of different places have access. Right, to right, right, right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's the announcement um, that, again, travelandshippodcast.com slash events for more information. And you have to RSVP for that link because, um, you know, we want the girls that want to be there there. You know, we don't want uh, any of those random pop ins like, fuck y'all, y'all are all ugly. I've been hearing like that was a thing that people were doing on Zoom. We don't want that. So RSVP so you can get the link. Um, that's yeah. it, y'all. Uh, RSVP'd. Oh, yay. Thank you. So I'll see you there, too. All right. So that's our time. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, Bye, y'all.